a tabaxi, a kender, human female, and a male pe human peasant. I keep seeing these descriptions all over the city. I don't even know what to do with you guys. Um, we'll leave the city. If you just, if you, we'll, we'll just go through, we'll leave through a portal right away. Um, we didn't, haven't meant to cause any problems in the city. We kind of have been in a spiral downwards of since we got taken from our home and we just just haven't had a chance to take a break. So we'll leave. Okay, you guys can roll a perception check. And I'll say to him, sir, it seems, uh, um, I've only joined this group recently, but it seems that all these, you know, the reason that there has been multiple problems with this group is that there are, um, there's some, some folks that wanted to kidnap this, uh, this young, uh, woman here and seem to have, uh, seem to have been the source of all these problems. They seem to, uh, you know, seems like they, um, they they tricked the group and led them into a situation where they'd be um um where they'd be attacked and so the the source of the commotion is not uh is not us but those who uh those who wish to do harm to this uh young woman keep uh they keep harassing us and that keeps uh keeps creating creating commotions i have enough to deal with the city is literally falling apart around me I don't need more ruckuses caused in the city. Um, everyone roll their perception check. Uh, Keldon, you notice the Davis um, standing behind him. Um, he uh, has like a little, uh, a, quite literally a, uh, a thought bubble above his head. It's like a little illusion and a bunch of pictograms are scrolling across it. Um, Akasha, you also noticed that, and one of the pictograms, um, strikes your eye. It is a pair of angel wings. Odo, you notice that the other, uh, pictograms around it seem an awful lot like he's thinking about these angel wings. Uh, the marshal basically throws his hands in the air and he's like, I, I don't even know what you're to do. Um, uh, the Duke of Darkwell would like to discuss this with you. If he chooses to press charges, you're fucked. Uh, I don't even know what to say. Um, but uh, you can deal with him uh, and I will take his statement after... Uh, after he's finished with you. And he uh, marches off. And the Davis follows him. You notice the Sentinels also have uh, one of those kind of thought bubbles. Um, if you zoom in on the character, you might be able to see it, but it's like a, a triangle with a circle in the middle of it. Um, you can roll an insight check to figure out what that means. What check? Insight. So what I can gather from the situation is that we're we're free to go for now, but we're probably going to be contacted again, or at least if the um for the issue with this when they've taken a statement from the Duke or whatever, they're gonna, probably going to contact us again. But we're free to go for now. Is that what I'm gathering? No, he the Duke is here and wishes to talk to you immediately. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Basically, he said, um. He's going to arrest you for the things you've done. Um, he doesn't. He doesn't even appear to know anything about what's going on in the thieves' guild. But he has other charges he wishes to lay against you, and uh, he's just waiting for the duke to um, officially state his uh, case. Oh, I see. I thought. I thought it would take like hours before they would even be able to get in touch with the duke. I didn't know he was here. Okay. Gotcha. No, he is. He is here for this commotion. And, uh, he, uh, 
walks up to you and motions for all of you to gather around as the uh, marshal and the Dabis uh, wander off to the east. They're continuing um, their search. Uh, Kasha, you don't notice anything. Flynn doesn't notice anything. But Odo, you recognize um, the symbol. It is a rune. Um, it uh, generally uh, is an enhancement rune meant to prop up uh, senses. So uh, you think that there's some kind of magical effect that's been uh, cast on or controlling the sentinels that is boosting their awareness. So um, the Duke... Bunch of Robocops. Sorry, what was that? Bunch of Robocops. Uh, yeah, they all seem entranced too. Like, um, you've never seen the Sentinels just sort of like stand like robots before. Oh, sorry, since I missed that, that context, the, um, the Duke is, is who exactly, I mean, how does the Duke relate to sigils? To, how does the Duke relate like to the Lady of Pain or does he? Um, the Duke of Darkwell is a significant political figure, but he is basically just the um, ruler of a small section of uh, Sigil. Uh, there are dozens of dukes that rule over different portions and lords and whatnot. When it's all said and done, uh, they answer to the uh, Lady of Pain. Um, the dukes are actually a couple of tiers down. Uh, in the ranks, even though in a normal um, royalty hierarchy, they're very high. Um, they are basically the top of the middling rulers, but they do have uh, direct uh, communication with the lady and the uh, council of sigil. Um, so I, I'd like to, I'd like to politely address the the duke and say, um, sir, I understand there was some kind of commotion. I was not with the group at the time that this event happened, but I am aware that some uh, some uh, evil and lawless individuals um, who were enemies of the group led them to um, trick them and led them into an area within your area of control. Um, which they unknowingly trespassed due to this trickery, so that they would get into a a a a, a fight. Um, so uh, I, I'm sure everyone in the group is greatly sorry for the um, any any trouble that this caused. I mean, it's not. Uh, I don't believe it's their fault, but I think we'd be willing to. Um, um, we're we're competent individuals, and perhaps there's some service we could do for you in exchange for the. Uh, the trouble that the group inadvertently caused in your territory. He says, I'm not exactly sure what you're referring to. Um, the events of today are the only things that concern me. Um, I uh, am very oh, bothered. I thought, sorry, I thought this was the Duke of the other territory. Did I miss no, this is down? the Duke of this area. Oh, this that's why I thought it was going to take hours to get to him, because how is that doing that other area? Okay, yeah, I get it now. Never mind. So I won't say, I thought he was the, I thought he was the other Duke. Sorry. No. no. Okay, I'll just wait for him to start talking then before I say anything. <laughs> okay. Um, he uh, approaches you and he says, uh, the ground seems to be uh, trembling with your arrival. Um. Uh, I am very concerned about the events of today, and I uh, am very passionate about uh, my territory and my responsibilities, and it uh, would pain me greatly to uh, see this city weep and bleed. It is very, it is very important to maintain order and cease this collapse we definitely do not want chaos to reign i uh i agree with you whole uh 
Wait. Well, part of the your uh, was he if he's a duke, should I call him your grace, or is that not apply to these dukes? Just lord. Okay. Um, so, sorry, you did catch all that, right? Just checking first. I doubt Gildan caught any of it because I don't think he's aware of any of it. Yeah. Then Akasha might quiet Keldon here for a second, okay. and and she'll just speak up, and she would just say, um, "We understand that um, you're very passionate about this district and its people, and we certainly don't want to put you through any more pain or to allow chaos to reign." So I don't forget how I forget how the rest of it goes, but uh, we. Uh, We seek only to um, yeah. we seek only to support order and to um, lick our wounds and um, to I guess yeah I don't know how else to bring it in. But um, I guess she'll, long story short, she'll make references to the same thing as obliquely as she can, so as to, I guess, not immediately alert the Davis, the Marshal, or the Sentinels, and she'll just try to keep up with the Duke here, since he seems to know what's going on, whether they do or not, she's, she doubts they do, I guess. Um, and she, I guess she'll try to intimate to him that their goals align and that we're just like you should repeat again that you know we're willing to simply um leave the city make amends through whatever means that we have but we do need to get out of here and we need to heal um abigail immediately well that is a very passionate uh, impassioned plea and i would be very happy to arrange for that um, assuming that, um, I could get a passionate plead or pledge. That's what I'm looking for. A passionate pledge, um, about the future. Huh. You can roll a sense motive if you want. Yeah, I mean, I think I know what he's saying, but I don't know how to give him what he wants. Nice. Um, he's basically implying that uh, he would like this to be noted as a favor that he can call in at a later point. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, Abigail's so young, how would she even, I guess we would have to remind her, or we have to keep we have to make sure to tell Abigail this is one of the, the nice dukes you should uh, be favors for. You can roll a knowledge local. Okay, she is not trained in knowledge local. Okay, then. Um, Keldon, you can roll a knowledge local. Okay, I sent you a message on Discord. Um, Abigail seems to understand what he's trying to say, and uh, she moves up and agrees to his terms. All right. Something like uh, she will remember this. Yes, you noticed that her vocabulary has exploded since the last time you talked to her. Like, she had a list of words she could physically say before she was abducted, but now she can speak in uh, at least uh, broken sentences. Hmm. Hmm.
All right. Well, we will, I guess, if she agrees to his terms, then Akasha will thank the Duke here. And um, she might speak a little louder so that the others can hear and, and like, just be like, and we will accept whatever, you know, crimes you may levy towards us or judgments you may place upon us. Okay. Um, give you a moment to process everything before I give you his response. What did we? What happened? Uh, you have no idea. I mean, this would suck if Abigail is <laughs> betraying us, but I don't think she's doing that, so... We'll see. We'll see if she's betraying us. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's no way to communicate this, really. Akasha's already used her once a day, you know, telepathy, so just got to trust. Okay. Um, he uh, says, uh, very well, then. I will talk to the marshal and um, let him know that we have settled our um, differences in an amicable way and that uh, you are free to go. Uh, when, when he's out of hearing weight range, I'll... Um... Um, and I don't want Abigail here to this, but I'll kind of um, pull Acacia to the side and, and whisper to him very quietly um, that uh, basically this, um, this 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 Duke is not uh, is not exactly known for being a good guy. Hmm. Well, we didn't have a ton of choice there. It was we either accepted his terms or do or die. Yeah. But maybe we can resolve that later. Let's go get Abigail taken care of ASAP. Yeah, I'm up for that. Okay, cool. are you guys on the temple uh, screen? Yeah, we're on the roof, though. Yeah, I'll just move the roof. Hang on. There you go. Sith would not be here. Or at least I don't think she would be. Okay, so you guys return to the Temple of uh, Septimus to talk to Archbishop Agato. Um, he uh, immediately reacts uh appalled when he sees abigail um by this point her skin is getting rather gray and other than her actual uh uh wing blades most of her feathers have fallen out i say father is there uh uh, is there something that can be done? Uh, I'm really worried about uh, Abby. Okay. Um, he casts uh, Detect Magic on her and determines that there is nothing affecting her. Um, and then he asks you what happened to her. I'll explain what I know as best as I can, including the fact that she's doing something to herself. Uh, that's causing a corruption. We have to, maybe we have to talk her out of doing whatever she's doing before we can help her. I don't even entirely understand what that is, but I'll explain it to him to the best of my ability and explain what I've observed and what I know has happened to her to the best I can. This is one of the reasons that um, interbreeding is 
frowned upon because it is very easy for uh, young celestials to be corrupted because they lack the uh, wisdom and willpower to resist these urges. Um, my guess is her exposure has scarred her, but I, uh, I know a spell that will remove that uh, scar from her psyche. And uh, that should end the progression of her uh, descent. And uh, after that, uh, I will uh, talk to her and make sure that she is, uh, is right in the head, her mind is clear, and then I can uh, grant her an atonement. And I might suggest also, while all this is going on, that maybe all of us just try to spend a little time with her and kind of be the best of the influence on her as we can, you know, talk to her and try to put her in like a, I don't know, warm, positive, loving environment to try to do the best we can to steer her into a more positive influence, you know, love, big, big loving family to try to be a positive influence to counteract the bad, I guess, is the, is the thought. Okay. Um, after a few minutes, uh, another priest of Tempest or Tempest of Septimus enters the uh, the sanctuary, and uh, he uh, casts Heart's Ease on her, and you can see uh, her like she kind of seems really amped up all the time. Um, she just sort of relaxes suddenly, like uh, a huge weight has been lifted off of her. And then uh, he says, uh, will that be all? And uh, Agata says, uh, yes, that will be all. Thank you. And he exits the chamber. Agata tells you that uh, she should be fine and she should not um, progress any further. Um, Give her some time to relax and recuperate, and uh, in the morning I will talk to her. And then he leaves as well. Okay. I just think once in the morning after he's talked to her and that kind of thing, that we, after she's had a chance to rest and re recuperate, we just, like I said, I'll try to spend time with her and be a positive influence. Because, I mean, we've, We've counteracted the magical part, but there's kind of a human element too that just, if we just spend time trying to be a positive influence to her might help. It may, you know, take some time and not right now, but like in the coming days, just try to be the best positive influence we can in her, you know, putting her in, a, putting her in the best positive environment we can. It's just, it's just, it's just my thought. Okay. Anyone else have any input? Okay, then uh, you guys uh, can rest in the uh, the Church of Septimus, um, or you can go back to Paul's place if you want. It's not particularly comfortable here because it's just a stone floor you're sleeping on, but it is uh, the most secure place to be. Yeah, Paul's place is that one place that the enemies know about already? Because when wasn't Abby taken from there, or? Uh, yeah, important? you guys were at Paw's place when the Master of Locusts arrived. Yes, yeah, it seems like that location has been made, so... <laughs> well, the, there is some uh, question about how that works, because the Master of Locusts seemed to have an awful lot of information that didn't um, make any sense for him to have. Like, you've never met this guy before, but he knows that she was born on Acheron. There aren't very many people alive in the world that have that piece of information, and they all went their separate ways when you got to the uh, um, the city. The only, like, Maggie, her mother, died almost instantly when you guys entered the city. Um, 
Sith is the only one around uh, that was there, and all the other people went back to their own planes. So he has clearly got information from a... Uh, I don't know how to say it without uh, hinting at anything, but uh, definitely a special source. Do you have any sense of what... I mean, it, it seems like there's very few things that that source could be. Do we have any sense, like, what could the sources potentially even be? Do we know? Yeah, you can... You can roll a knowledge religion. Or a knowledge planes. Or both if you want. 24 planes. Okay, um... Flynn, your, uh... Religion check, uh reveals to you that uh, Akron is the home of uh, Maglubiet, the god of the goblinoids, and uh, the Master Locus was a hobgoblin. So Maglubiet, I'm assuming, knows Abigail, and he it was in Cahoot, or he was talking to his follower. Yes, he was very clear that she has to go back to Acheron. Doesn't seem to have anything to do with the prophecy or any other agenda. Um, Odo, this is also obvious to you. You're like, yeah, he clearly had uh, divine information because he came directly to where you were. And you could base that on the fact that because she's from Acheron, he knows where she is. Doesn't matter where she goes. She is a child of Acheron and he has a connection to her um from a planar point of view for uh Keldon, um that uh anyone uh born on a plane is subject to the uh basically scrying uh of the greater powers of that plane so uh bane would be the other god that would be aware of her um, because Akron is also his home base. And I think that's all the info you get on those checks. Are we talking something like using a commune spell, or is it like the, the god directly, directly talking to them kind of thing? Well, he, keep, he kept referring to going back to Acheron, like he was from Acheron. So that would imply that he had some kind of direct link. It could have still been just a commune, a vision, or whatever that he was sent to Sigil to recover her. But um, it's also completely uh, reasonable that someone of his power is seated close to uh, the god himself. So that's the kind of thing where even a mind blink wouldn't help because a uh, mind blink is only stopped by a wish or like the direct intervention of a deity but i guess that's what we're talking about essentially is direct intervention of a deity yes there is no way that you can shield her from bane or uh maglob yet i think they're the only two greater powers on uh acheron so essentially we're going to be running from bane and maglob yet forever Sounds like we might need to take a trip back there. Well, going to Acheron puts you on a plane with a god that basically has infinite power. Acheron is the last place you're ever going to want to go because both Bane and Maglubiet are all powerful there. Here, they have to send emissaries and avatars and whatnot, but there, they are actually the god. Okay, okay. Maybe the safest place would actually be planes of good, especially, um, um, in that way, they would have a harder time and or be disadvantaged if they sent servants there, because they're the direct enemies. The folks there don't want 
are not going to want incursions from the lower plane, you know, coming in. And so they may even be prevented through those gods from even portaling in or whatever. That would be a really good idea. And just uh, an hour before you joined the game, uh, they went to uh, Mount Celestia and uh, talked to Septimus, the god of strength. And he told uh, them that uh, she could not enter his realm. Um, we could look at going to Arcadia. Uh, do I know what I know anything about that? Well, you can roll a check on that, a religion check. Religion, religion or plain. you can roll either or That's both. That's check right there. Okay. Um, Tyr would probably have the same issue. He doesn't have the same mandate um, as his father has because he didn't have the direct, all the stuff that happened with Abel happened before he was born. Um, so there's a possibility that that might work, but uh, the downside of that is Abel wouldn't have any trouble going to Arcadia either. Well, what? I think we might, if Septimus isn't letting us on his plane, we might have to uh, maybe go talk to Tyr. Might be for, or... for the ruling um, deity of a plane, the entire plane is his realm. He might have a specific area that is important to him, uh, but uh, Bane is the ruling power of um, Acheron, so anything that happens on Acheron, he is completely aware of 24-7. Uh, Maglevyat would also have a large swath, but when she was born, they were actually in goblin territory and were attack attacked by goblins. Um, oh, I was asking about Septimus, whether the entire Septimus oh, yes. realm is the entire thing. Yes, Septimus is a supreme power, so he would be above the greater powers. Um, and he is the uh, all-powerful deity of uh, the heavens, so the entire plane would be his realm. And when they came to the gate to Celestia, uh, the archangels locked the gate and wouldn't let them pass. They were actually adrift in the astral plane for a long time, talking to Septimus because he wouldn't let them into his plane. And that's where they fought the red dragons and then teleported to the inn where they found you. Uh, what, what about the twin paradises? Um, I would have to look that up, but I think you're going to find that would probably have a similar issue. The problem with the upper planes, and you also weren't here for this, Kelvin, is uh, Abigail's father, Abel is a remarkably powerful uh, divine being that is searching for her. He makes all these other people that are looking for her look like cannon fodder. Okay, so the upper planes might actually be worse than as far as, far as that goes. Yeah. Um, they, he came to, they went to Excelsior, the, uh, the border town, in the Outlands, and they thought that would be a good place to hide, and Abel found them there, and Abel faced off against Septimus, Michael, and Gabriel, and escaped. Um, with my knowledge of the planes, is there any other reasonable place in terms of, I don't know, demi-planes, or just other planes outside of the outer planes that would, could somehow, uh, be more defensible and like you know somehow prevent people from easily gating in and just attacking kind of thing uh you can roll a knowledge planer um you could definitely find a pocket plane, but unless you are the controller of that plane, you really don't have any say in who comes in and who doesn't. Um, so, it, like I said, the, the upper planes are all within the realm of Abel, 
and the lower plains are all places you're not really going to want to go and you're already in the outlands so it really only leaves nirvana and uh limbo uh limbo is somewhere no one in the party wants to go because you're all lawful and i don't think you guys have actually done any research on uh nirvana no, we haven't. Um... Or possibly somewhere in the Outlands other than Sigil, too. Might not be any better, but... Well, the reason that they brought her to Sigil as the final hiding spot was because the biggest threat they were worried about was Abel, and Abel can't enter the, uh, the city of Sigil. Right, yeah. Um, or at I... least that was their belief at the time. I'm gonna but go the lady to... of pain, lady of pain, uh, finds out about her. That's bad. So, <laughs> well, the idea behind the uh, the prophecy, and we haven't really dealt with this. I don't know how much the party was interested in telling you uh, at first, but I'm assuming now they're going to spill the beans. Um, Abigail is the replacement for the lady of pain. She is <clears throat> prophesized to take over. So the idea is that this is the place she's going to rule. And every time she comes and goes from the plane, the plane trembles. That was the reference in uh, Darkwell's speech. Uh, so the more times you go in and out of the plane, the easier it is for the Lady of Pain to find her. Figure out which portal she's going through and what's happening. Oh, so therefore maybe we want to just stay here in sigil just uh because we're probably going to need to come back at some point so maybe it's best to just stay here since we know we're going to have to come back anyway and that might alert her if we leave and come back it's just the concern is i guess that then if uh if um if the powers in acheron know where she is that they're just you know gonna keep sending attackers to wherever she is in sigil i guess is the issue well so far, the emissary of Maglebiet went down like a bitch. Like, even in the original fight where he caught you completely off guard, he um, fled the uh, combat almost immediately. So, if he is at least in the top tier of what Maglebiet is going to be sending against you, he's not really a threat. Um, Bane has not made his presence known as of yet, so you don't know what his uh, emissary may be like. Um, and then I don't think anyone will, no one rolled high enough on religion. Akasha, do you have a real religion? Akasha does not have knowledge for that. Hey, since these are lawful deities we're talking about, is there a place we can stash her where they won't attack us because it would be unlawful to do so? In Sigil, say. Well, the lawful nature of it is dependent upon what your specific code is. So in this situation, if you are a sworn uh, follower of Bane or Maglubiet and he gives you a command, you would follow that to the best of your ability. The laws of Sigil, well, they don't, wouldn't want to flagrantly abuse them. They're not going to let them stand in the way of achieving their directive. Um, if you were running from followers of Mistra, you might have more of a um, argument on that point, but uh, they'll find a way to arrange it. Like I said, the one time they uh, lured you into an ambush, and the other time they just called Odo out and he came out to fight them. Well, maybe we just, uh, wherever we stay, we just don't leave in spite of being taunted. I guess they would probably still come in, but I don't know.
Um, I don't know if he caught what I wrote, but I'm going to go to the Temple of Tyr and I'll just pray for some guidance, see if uh, any if uh, my deity has any input on what to say or what to do. Okay, you want to roll a religion check? 20. Um, you're unsure what your god's position on this would be. He, uh, is very likely to side with his father in that, um, the nature of the rules about divine beings are tended to protect the upper planes from basically the chaos that Abel caused, um, but at the same time, he is a very uh, just ruler and very compassionate. So at the same time, he might uh, he might at least acknowledge the possibility of it. But there's no real way to tell without uh, presenting him with the choice. Okay. Well, when I get back, I'll kind of mention that um, mention that to the party and that. We could possibly go there for some guidance. Or at least a few of us do trip into to the plane. But it's not to me that there's a significant risk he might side with Abel, though. No, his father, Tyr's father is Septimus. No one is siding with Abel. No one's siding well, with Abel. Uh... I meant Septimus, but Septimus who... Septimus said no, Sorry. but Tyr is a law... Septimus said no to the Mount Celestial because it's a good plane. He doesn't want any part. Tyr is a god of law. He might see... He might be able to give us more guidance than his father because he's more of a lawful deity. A just deity. Okay, so you want to travel to Arcadia to do that? Yeah, I'll do a. I'll travel to Arcadia, um, just to go get more like, get personal and figure out, uh, get more ideas, like of what we can do, instead of just staying cooped up in sigil, because I feel like that's a terrible idea. Okay, uh, are you going alone? Um, well, I'll go with. Uh, I'm assuming Pa would be Pa would have the. Is there anyone else who follows Tyr here? No, I'm the only one, right? Yeah, you guys all pick different religions. Yes, uh, after you rest in the morning, you would be 11th level. Okay, well, I think I'll just go with Pa, because he'd be the closest one who would know. But at the same time, I might just do a solo trip. Well, we'll do a solo trip since Pa isn't here to take yeah. actions. I'll do a solo trip with me and Axe, and we'll go. 